Hey my fellow light explorers, hope you're all doing well. In this video, I want to show you how to create a blended astro image using your star adventurer, star tracker from inception to completion. So stick around, it's going to be a fun video. I am at one of my favorite places in southern Utah the Toadstool Hoodoos near Kanab. The goal today is to walk you through the entire process of creating your own landscape astro image from inception to completion. So we'll first uh, choose a foreground, take that uh, image at dusk, then set up a tripod, mount the star adventurer and a gear on it, and then we will uh, take several shots of uh, Orion's belt, Finally, we'll bring those shots into a stacking software, stack those shots, and blend that final stacked uh, image with the foreground. All right, guys, so I like this composition. We have these three hoodoos, uh, and we'll have the Milky Way going up between the uh, cavity here, and we'll have Orion's belt on the right side. So let's take uh, a couple of shots of the foreground. What I'll do is I'm going to uh, actually take uh, two shots, one focused on the near end and one focused on the far end uh, and then I'll focus stack. So make sure you don't have your AF enabled, it should be manual focus. Zoom all the way in on your LCD panel and then use your manual focus ring to focus. So that's cool, exposure is uh, two and a half seconds, self time was on. Alright, here's the first shot. Okay, and now I will focus on the far end of this uh, image on the hoodoo right there. Zoom in all the way and then let's focus manually right there. The second image. Cool, so we have uh, front and back. Okay, cool. All right, guys, so I have uh, Stellarium, the app open, and uh, what you see now is that uh, around 8.15 at night, the Milky Way should be between uh, the first and the second uh, hoodoos, and uh, with the constellation of Orion on the right side. So this should be a cool uh, composition. All right, cool. So let's set up the uh, star adventurer and uh, polar align. All right, guys, so now that you've taken your foreground shot, it's time to set up your star adventurer. Now you have two options. One is that you place your star adventurer directly on this uh, tripod uh, right here in the same location, but these hoodoos are in the front and they'll obstruct the sky. So when you start taking your images of Orion in the evening, because the tracker will move with the stars and Orion, the hoodoos in the front will be blurred out and it'll be a mess right here. And blending that image will be an issue. What I would say is note the direction the camera is facing towards the hoodoos using a compass and then simply move let's say to an area that is just close by to the hoodoos but clear of the hoodoos with no obstruction of uh, the sky so right here so the hoodoos are right there you can see them we are about maybe 20 feet from uh, the hoodoos and facing in the same direction so I'll set up my tripod right here, mount the star adventurer, aim in the same direction as uh, the hoodoos, so the framing is the same. And uh, polar line and wait for Orion to rise. So let's set up a tripod and mount our star adventurer on that. 
So at this point, my tripod's level, my Star Adventurer is mounted on the tripod. It is polar aligned, pointing towards Celestial Pole. So it's too dark now for any more uh, video. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I will mount my camera and the 1424 lens onto the Star Adventurer using the bollard adapter and then point the camera south towards uh, Orion's belt. Uh, it is rising right now, you can't see it, but uh, maybe another half an hour, 40 minutes or so, it should be framed correctly. Um, and then I'll take a few shots of that and then I will see you back home where we'll stack these images and blend them with the foreground image. All right, guys, so now we are in Photoshop and the first thing we'll do is, is to stack our foreground. We had taken two images at uh, two different focus points at the hoodoos and what I'll do now is to stack them to get a final image with sharpness from the front to the rear. Now do note you can use a dedicated software like Helicon Focus to stack uh, these images. But for the purposes of this tutorial I'm going to use Photoshop. So first we need to load the images for our stack. And that's as simple as going to File, Scripts, and then Load Files into Stack. So the Load Layers uh, dialog box opens up and uh, you will use the Browse feature to find your images. In my case, I have them in this folder. So I'll choose the two images that I want to use to Focus Stack and then click on Open. So now we can see our images on the left side of the uh, dialog box. And uh, it's important to select this one option below that uh, is uh, named Attempt to Automatically Align Source Images. And the reason for that is that uh, we need to align these uh, layers because of a phenomena called focus breathing. So when you change the focus point in a frame, you would think that only the focus point would change, right? However, due to focus breathing, there might be a slight change in the field of view and magnification too. If you thus take these two images, you know, one focused at a nearby rock in the frame and the other at the distant hoodoo, these two images might not align correctly due to focus breathing and without the alignment, the focus stacking won't work. So let me show you how this might look uh, without aligning the images. So I won't select this uh, option here. So I have my two images uh, uh, loaded and I'm going to click on OK. Photoshop will then load these two images as layers. And you'll see them on the right side. Okay, so now you have two images uh, number 2196 and 2197. So let me zoom in all the way. And uh, let's go here somewhere. So what I'll do is I'll hide the uh, top image uh, 2196. So you can see the bottom one and notice how these two images are not aligned. There's a very slight shift in the uh, alignment. It's very subtle, but this can cause problems with your stacking. So it's very important to align the images. So let me close this out and let's restart the process. So we go to File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack, and then we click Browse, we choose our two images, click open and then select the attempt to automatically align source images option. Click OK. So now Photoshop will open up both the images as layers and align them. So once it opens that up, let me show you how that might look. So now you can see on the right side, the two images have opened up as layers, 2196, 2197. So let me zoom in again as before. And now when I hide the top layer, 
you can see there's no movement at all. They are aligned perfectly. So once you have all your images uh, opened up as layers, it's really simple then just go to edit and then click on auto blend layers. Now notice out here, this option auto blend layers is grayed out. And that's because we haven't selected the layers. So you can see we only selected the top layer. So to blend, you need to select the layers you want to blend, right? So what you'll do is click on the topmost layer. And then if you have, you know, three, five, seven, how many layers you have below, choose the bottom layer. But before you click that, press shift and then click on the bottom layer. So now we have all the layers selected from the top to the bottom. Now go to edit and you'll see a auto blend layers option is now enabled. So click on that. We'll have the auto blend layers uh, uh, dialog box opening up. Important to select stack images option. And then what I do is I select the lower two options also, the seamless tones and colors and the content aware fill transparent areas. Sometimes during the uh, the uh, stacking process, there might be a few uh, small areas that are transparent. And so uh, the content aware feature of Photoshop will fill those areas uh, with the right uh, colors and pixels, etc. So now hit OK. And Photoshop will blend these two layers. In my case, you could be having more layers. Uh, based on the uh, content, essentially it'll uh, choose all the sharpest areas and uh, blend these two images and create a merged layer on top. So now you can see there's a merged layer on the, uh, the layers palette. And if you notice each of the uh, layers we had opened up initially, each of our frames now has a layer mask and uh, the selections in the layer mask represent the areas that are the sharpest, that the Photoshop deems the sharpest uh, in those uh, frames. Okay, so once you've got this, all you do is now save your work or this file. So you go to File, Save As, and uh, I think I'm going to save it under um, tutorial and then images for blend and then we'll save it as the foreground stack and make sure it's a, a TIFF uh, format and then hit save. So once you've done that you have the foreground image uh, stacked and ready to go and be blended with the sky image. Now let's move on to uh, the sky uh, image. So now let's uh, process our constellation of Orion's images that we had taken with our Star Adventurer Star Tracker using uh, Adobe Camera Raw. So I have around 20 images I had taken with my Star Tracker and I have them in this Raw Files folder. So what I'll do is I'll first open these up in Adobe Camera Raw, make some minor adjustments and then we will sync these uh, files up uh, and then export them as TIFFs into a separate folder. Then we'll stack those uh, exported images using a program like Starry Sky Stacker for Macs or Deep Sky Stacker for Windows. And then we will blend the final stacked image with the foreground image we had just stacked and uh, exported. So to open these up in Camera Raw, I'll simply select the top image and then shift uh, click the bottom one to select them all. Right click anywhere on the dialog box and then open with Photoshop. And uh, Adobe Photoshop will open up these uh, images in Camera Raw. You can see them all at the bottom of this film strip. And I make very slight adjustments to uh, the vibrant saturation um, 
you know the uh, white balance and uh, maybe I'll uh, lower the uh, color noise uh, reduction and then export all these files as TIFFs. So we have the first image selected and uh, it's quite dark here. So what I first do is I will increase the exposure by around 1.5 stops or so. So I can see it clearly. That's our constellation of Orion right there. And this is the Milky Way. And then I'll bump up the vibrance to 100 and saturation to 100 too. So I can see what I'm doing and what the impact will be. So let's see, we will work on the white balance first. And the white balance right now is uh, 4160 or 4150. And uh, I will just adjust the slider until it looks good to me. It's a little too warm and now it's too cool. For me, 4600 works uh, fine. There's no right, wrong answer out here. You can uh, choose uh, the white balance you like. Just try and keep it uh, close to uh, natural. You know, it, sometimes people put these uh, uh, crazy colors on the Milky Way and these uh, celestial objects, which is fine. It's an artistic choice, but it's not close to uh, being natural. So it depends on you, really. If you want that kind of unnatural look, that's totally fine, too. So I normally try and keep my Milky Way and these uh, uh, celestial objects between 4000 and 4800 white balance. Okay, so I've got that here. I'm going to leave uh, the contrast, highlights, shadows, all these intact. And then the next thing I'm going to do is come to, uh, let's see, optics. I'll select the remove uh, chromatic uh, aberrations. And then uh, I think what I'm going to do is lower the color noise reduction to zero. Okay, so once I've done that, I can now bring my vibrance uh, down. Maybe keep it around like 15, the same with the saturation, you know, maybe 20 for saturation. You can adjust these later anyway in post, so it's not a big deal. Um, once I have that, reduce my exposure back to zero and uh, these adjustments now have been applied to the first image. So what you'll do is you'll select all of them, shift click, the last one, and come back to your first image, right click on that. And then you will choose uh, sync settings right here. And uh, what I do is just go and click on check all. That way it'll sync up all the settings. Even though we haven't adjusted all, it's just uh, a faster way to sync all the settings. And then hit OK. So now all the adjustments we had made to our first frame will be applied to all our subsequent frames. So if I click on, say, this frame right here, you'll see our white balance is 4600. Okay, so now we will export these images as TIFF files. So for exporting it, just go up here and uh, Make sure your format is TIFF. Select the folder. My folder is going to be, let's see. Um, I think it was a tutorial, sky, and then TIFF for stacking, okay? TIFF files for stacking. So I want all of these, um, exported files to be saved in this folder as a TIFF format. Keep your uh, bit depth at uh, 16 bits uh, 
the channel and then just hit save and Photoshop will start exporting these uh, let me show you guys how it looks okay you can see in the bottom left it's showing you how many of these files are remaining to be exported so we have a total of 20 16 are remaining so four have been exported already so keep an eye on that and this uh, rotating uh, wheel and once that is done all your files are now exported to that folder and are ready for uh, stacking so then we can simply use uh, a program like uh, you know starry sky stacker for mac or uh, deep sky stacker or sequitor for windows and i believe those programs are free the mac one is uh, paid uh, we'll use those programs to uh, stack these uh, images and create the final image uh, with the, a greater signal to noise ratio and uh, uh, less to no noise and uh, then use that uh, final stacked image with the foreground image blend them together in Photoshop to create the final uh, Orion's uh, landscape Astro okay so we have two remaining now almost done and uh, once this is uh, completely exported which it is now we can now click on done and we can go to our folder to check if these files are there and you can see them all in this folder okay now let's go on to starry sky stacker to stack these images now i'm using starry sky stacker because i have a, a mac but you guys can use the windows versions if you have windows uh, it'll be a similar process the whole idea is to stack these images and get a final stacked image that uh, we can use uh, we can process and then use to blend with our foreground okay so let's go to starry sky stacker the next step now is to stack our images that we had exported to our tiffs folder I'm using Starry Sky Stacker and when I first open the program I get this dialog box which uh, is asking me to load the images that I intend to stack. So my images are in this folder called TIFF files for stacking and all I'll do is select them all and then click open. Starry Sky Stacker will begin reading those 20 images to ascertain if they are actually light frames which means are they the actual exposure frames or are they calibration frames like uh, dark flats or biases now in astrophotography a crucial part of uh, taking astro photographs is to take calibration frames too and this will avoid a lot of problem later on during your post processing so i strongly advise taking calibration frames there are lots of good videos on YouTube that explain what calibration frames are and how to take them. Now, I've only taken lights for the purposes of this tutorial, but I strongly advise taking calibration frames. Now, on the progress bar, you can see that uh, Starry Sky Stacker has finished uh, reading uh, two images now. And uh, once it's finished reading all... Uh, 20 images we will see a new dialog box where it'll list all the images and uh, it'll identify each image as being either a light or a calibration frame like a dark bias or a flat and it'll give you an option to switch uh, each frame from what it perceives to be the correct uh, kind of uh, frame so if you have taken say a dark frame and it's showing up as a light frame then you can switch the uh, the kind of uh, uh, frame it is uh, in the next dialog box okay 
So now we are in step number two, and you can see all the frames are listed sequentially. And uh, we have a table here that says light, dark, flat, or ignore. And uh, you can choose to switch the kind of frame it is or ignore this completely. And uh, once I hit continue, it'll begin the process of aligning these images. So it's gonna take each image and make sure that it's aligned correctly. Uh, all the stars in each frame are exactly aligned. And uh, once it's done that, we can proceed with the uh, actual stacking. Now you can see that uh, it's estimating the quality for these 20 images and this is where the software will determine if uh, uh, every frame that it's going to stack is of a good enough quality to carry out the stacking. Now, if you notice up here on the upper left, you'll see that uh, Starry Sky Stacker is saying that it will only combine or composite 15 images. We had 20. So it's saying that uh, hey, you know, I only feel 15 of your images are worth combining or compositing. But you can actually go ahead and you can change the parameters over here to include more images or fewer images. Depends on you completely. And uh, what you can do is you can actually go down to the current image uh, dialog box, the drop down, and then choose any of these which have been arranged from the best quality to the worst, right? And you can see in the bottom, these five images are crossed out. So Starry Sky Stacker is excluding these five images from the stack. And uh, you can choose any of the images in the drop down, and then choose to either include them or exclude them. So if I choose say 2491, and that's what I'm seeing out here, if I don't like it, I can go up here and exclude it from the list of images to be stacked. Now let's say I want these 15 images and normally for me, these default values work pretty well. So what I'll do is I will just hit composite, right? So once I hit composite, sorry, this button right here, it will begin to combine those 15 images and create the final stack. So it's now combined these images and this is what the output is. It's giving you a couple of, uh, a few options. You can choose between dark, median, median, mean, max, min. I normally go with median or dark median. So let's take median and all we'll do is, is save the current image in a folder of our choice. So I'm going to use um, images for blend and then call it sky image and click save. So that'll save the uh, combined version of your, of your um, stacked images for the sky and then we can proceed with the processing of the image before we blend that with the foreground. So let's move straight to the blending between the foreground and the uh, finished sky image. Uh, I will process this file in PixInsight and Photoshop and then show you the actual uh, finished product. That's a whole different tutorial uh, to see the processing uh, in PixInsight or Photoshop, how to stretch the image and you know apply level skills, etc. All right, so now let's go on to Photoshop to blend the final processed sky image with the initial foreground image. All right, guys. So our last task now is to blend our foreground with the sky, and uh, I have already processed my sky using the uh, PixInsight software along with the uh, Photoshop. And I won't show that here because that's a lengthy process and uh, 
that might be the subject of a future tutorial. You also have several uh, great videos on YouTube that will walk you through how to process your astro images using PixInsight and Photoshop. But let's blend our foreground and uh, the sky. To do that, we'll first load them into layers in Photoshop. So go to File, Scripts, and then go to Load Files into Stack. The Load Layers dialog box opens up and we will click on the Browse button and then select the two images, the foreground and the sky. So these are my two finished files. I'm going to click Open. And make sure that uh, you do not check this box right here that will align the source images because in this case, these two images are not identical. So we don't want them aligned. Click OK. And Photoshop will open up both these images as layers. And you'll see them now in the Layers palette on the bottom right. Make sure the foreground layer is above the sky layer. And if not, pull up the foreground layer until it's above the sky layer. Now, the whole idea is to create a mask in the foreground layer and then essentially create the mask and then have the background layer, the sky, revealed through that mask and that'll become a blend, a finished blend. So to create the mask, we'll first click on the foreground layer, then go to the quick selection tool, click on that, and then simply click with your left mouse button and drag across to select the sky. You can see these marching ants here. So when you first start out, what I would say is uh, don't select very complex foregrounds like tr with trees and you know bushes and all because uh, they're harder to mask. Just select something simple like this, you know mountains, uh, some of these hoodoos, etc., which can be quite easy to mask. So once you have the selection right here, we will go to add a layer mask. So go down on the bottom right and then click on add layer mask. And Photoshop will add this layer mask. You can see it right here to your foreground. But notice that the mask is inverted. So the foreground's gone and the sky is showing right through. So what you'll do is you will press Command I on a Mac or Control I on a PC, I being invert, to invert the mask. And that looks nice already. Now, the next step is to refine this mask. So the quick selection tool will give a rough selection and create a rough mask. So the demarcation between the foreground and the sky might have some artifacts and might not be very, very precise. So what I do is I zoom in all the way to say, you know, 100%. And then you can see out here, notice these uh, the green, green line between the huru and the sky. So that's where your mask is not uh, precise. So to make a more precise mask, what you'll do is you will click on this mask for the foreground. So don't click on the layer, but on the actual mask itself. So left click on that. And once you've done that, you are going to ensure that the uh, the color on top here is black and the color on the bottom is white. Okay, it could be inverted like this, but you don't want that. You want the black color on top and the white on the bottom. And then you're going to click on the brush tool and select that. Now I have a default 
value of around 55 from my last usage so say 50 should be a good enough uh, size and then make sure the mode is overlay and once you've got that all you'll do is run this through and trace along the demarcations between the foreground and the sky and notice that the green lines are all going and the selection is more precise now so you will need to go and trace this across all of the uh, foreground and uh, sky boundary all right so you're almost there let's see looking nice Now it could happen that uh, even after you do all this, if you zoom in, you might see some artifacts. So you can just reduce the brush size and uh, clean up that area a little bit manually. But normally I find uh, with simple uh, foregrounds like these, this works really well. All right, so that looks pretty good okay the next thing we'll do is we need to adjust the position of orion based on stellarium or at the actual time you had taken the photographs so remember i told you to make a note of where orion or your milky way etc would be in relation to your foreground and uh, then to adjust the position you'll just click on the sky layer and then on the move tool on the top left and then just left click on the sky and drag it until it's in the position you need for it to be so i think it was around here per stellarium so let's say it was here so i'll leave it there so now your sky is positioned correctly orion's where it's supposed to be in relation to the hoodoos all right, so next step now is to adjust the brightness of the foreground. I've taken this uh, image at dusk and uh, it's a little too bright for me currently and I need for it to be darkened a little uh, to make it more natural. So to darken the image, what you'll do is you will select the foreground layer and then just go up to layer new adjustment layer and select exposure click ok now you can see the exposure layer is above the foreground layer notice that if i try and decrease the exposure the exposure of the foreground and the sky is decreasing together. Same with if I increase. So I only want to apply this adjustment to the foreground. So what you'll do is you'll select this exposure layer, then go up to layer and create clipping mask. And now you'll notice that the exposure layer is indented to the right and you see this arrow coming down as pointing to the foreground layer. So any adjustments you make now will only impact the foreground layer. So if I take it down slightly, you can see it's only impacting the foreground layer. So now we will adjust this until we are happy with the exposure of the foreground let's say right there okay it's looking pretty good already and uh, if you're happy with this that's totally fine but I'm still not happy because 
you can see certain areas of the foreground that are a little bright and I want to uh, make adjustments locally uh, to darken those areas. So for example, this, let me increase the zoom. So this area here is a little too bright and also uh, the setting sun um, or the light coming from the west uh, has made the west facing uh, features too bright so I want to darken those a little bit so what I'll do is I'm going to use the burn tool which is a local adjustment which means that uh, that tool will target specific areas of the photos so the burn tool will actually darken certain areas and to use the burn tool all I'll do is click on the foreground layer so click on the actual foreground layer itself not the foreground mask layer but the foreground layer itself and then what you'll do is you'll go to the burn tool and select it so select the burn tool and here in this case I have a size of 118 pixel which is fine and I'm going to target the midtones. So you can target the highlight shadows or midtones. So I'm going to target the midtones. You can play with this and see what suits you better. And then when I apply this brush by left clicking and dragging across, you'll see how it starts to darken these areas I'm applying this burn tool to. And each time you apply it, it'll darken it more. So it's additive. How about this area? Let's make this a little dark. Here, let's go here. A little dark here. I'm applying the strokes randomly, but try and keep the strokes in the same direction. So. Um, it looks, uh, it doesn't look odd. Okay, so let's do this. Let's see. What about here? That looks nice. Let's make this. portion here is a little bit too bright like I said it's uh, individual uh, preference if you don't uh, want to do this it's totally fine but I just like to have it uh, a little bit darker that's my style Okay, let's see, this is almost there. And then here, a little bit here, it's a little bright. Let's zoom out a little and see. Yeah, that's looking pretty good, I think. Yeah, I find this burn tool uh, highly effective and uh, it's great for uh, localized uh, adjustments to your foreground. Okay, so I think we are okay, a little bit here also still. That's looking really, really nice. So at this point, uh, we are almost done. I just want to show you one more thing that uh, in case you wanted to make adjustments to your sky you could just click on the sky layer and then go to layer adjustment layer and then use any of the same options exposure you know brightness contrast etc you don't need to create a clipping mask for this layer because it's a bottommost layer 
and uh, there's nothing below that right so it's only your sky that's below uh, that uh, layer so any adjustments you make to that layer will only impact the sky all right so this is done and then we'll simply save I'm going to save this as um, a JPEG file. Let's call it finished uh, blend and save that. Now I do save a copy of uh, this workflow as a PSD or a Photoshop file too, because uh, if I want to come back here and I want to uh, play with these layers or exposure, I can do it directly without having to go through all the process of creating the mask, etc. So I'll select Photoshop and then I'll just call it uh, Final Blend Orion. That's a PSD file. So let's save that. So you have it in case you want to play with these uh, layers. And there you have it guys, the result of our blend. It's looking really nice and I'm pretty happy with this blend. If you have any questions about this uh, rather long video, then please ask them in the comment section below. And uh, if you have uh, any thoughts about uh, future videos or if you'd like me to focus on other processing techniques, then uh, please ask them in the comment section and I'll try and address those. Don't forget to check out my video on the Star Adventurer 2i setup. Uh, I'll link that in the description box below. But until next time, this is The Light Explorer. Signing out.